Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, dudes and dudettes, it is the grand finale, session number 20 of the Galfon Challenge match between Action Freak and Phil Galfon. Coming into today, Phil is up 237k, just shy of eight buy-ins with just 881 hands to go. Today, I've got the pleasure of being joined in the commentary booth by a lady once quoted as saying, the only reason I don't play PLO is to give everyone else a chance at winning. It is, of course, the co-host of the Rake podcast, the Iron Maiden of the poker community. It's none other than Crouton's mum, Jamie Kersetter. How are you doing, Jamie? <laughs> when I forbear and I see that flop, I'm usually loving life. I hope that, that is the case for Mr. Galfond. I wasn't surprised to see him continue for small for small sizing and set up a turn jam. Something around the one third quarter pot sizing. There it is. The man has been in the lab. Freak deep in the tank, thinking about this. I mean, coming into today's session, these first 100, 150 hands or so are just so crucial. If Freak can win a couple of buy-ins early on, doesn't want to give anything away. Otherwise, it's going to be GG's for Mr. Freak. That was uh that was the best part of the Venavidi match at the end that every single pot they're fighting over just five big blinds, you know, and every single one was so important with multiple, you know, a few hundred thousand uh euro going in either direction depending on the win. That was just crazy. Yes, yeah, just insane. I mean that match I don't think we'll ever get anything close to it, but if Freak has anything to do with it, he's gonna try and take it down to the wire. I don't want to take anything away from all of the hands, but I think the first 200 hands are going to be the most crucial. Um, because obviously we're already at a point where if Phil wanted to, he could fold out. If we get down to 550 hands to be played and Phil is up an additional, you know, two, two and a half binds, it wouldn't surprise me to see him start implementing like a limping strategy, still playing his game, but not fully embracing the variant side of heads up PLO as much. Oh, let's have a look. It's funny yeah, though. Mate. People who side bet on it are probably like, uh, excuse me, Phil. <laughs> Could you please just find the fold button for a few hours? Yeah, I mean, <laughs> people are going to be sweating this, that's for sure. But yeah, Phil had back to back on May 21st, 165K, May 22nd, 180K. Wow. Um, so that, I mean, yeah, that's almost. 400k swing there for Phil. Yeah. Freak won. I think Freak's biggest winning session was 254k on May 11th. So it has been done before. It can be yeah. done. I take that back then. This is a little scary. Ari Ari Komenot is saying table one curse letter because he wants to hear you say my name a hundred times today, but that's a terrible idea. We no. could do pawn stars too and just have them say porn a bunch of times. Not happening. <laughs> I'll tell you what is happening though. Phil leading out on this Ace of Diamonds River for pot and Freak coming back over the top saying let's play for $14,392. Phil deep in the tank. Oh, that's what we like to see. Ace seven one time, please. Things you love to see on a Tuesday afternoon. Phil 3-bet ripping it in with 880 hands to go. And Freak not snap calling as well. Gonna have to start making a list, Jamie, of things that we love on this channel. <laughs> One thing I love, I'm waiting for the guy who talks about birds to come back. Oh, well, please. I'm at some point today. <laughs> well, why are you inducing? It's 8 o'clock in the morning out there. You're trying to make... <laughs> Your morning more difficult than it's already I going to be. Wow! <laughs> Holy shit! You no, can. that is sick. That is the sickest hand of the challenge I have seen so far. 
And Freak didn't even slap call. Cool. With Nut Boat only losing to Quads. He just felt it. <sighs> Crazy. Wow. You're right. I mean, that's not a slow roller. He's not slow rolling. That is a legit spot where he's come back over the top. He knows Phil isn't ever jamming with ace five, seven five. He heavily blocks a seven. Deep into the tank. I mean, do we ever find the fold there? Two combos of quads and one combo of a seven. Uh, sorry, two combos of uh, of a seven. I guess we just have to cycle and uh, tap the felt. GG's action freak in the chat. That is disgusting. Herak, say hi, Henry. Do you know if the challenge is concluding today? I believe so. Boys and girls, we are playing out the final 881 hands today. Phil currently up 40k. And trying to increase that lead over on table yay Phil with the turn check raise. What if Phil came home, like if Farrah came home from poker at 4 a.m. and Phil's just uh, re-watching soaps that Farrah was in? That would be so romantic. <laughs> <laughs> really interesting hand on Ye Phil. Both flushes, uh, well, both flushes bricking. Jack 9 and Ace Jack getting there. But with an SPR 0.25, Phil, happy to get it in on this run out with whatever it was that he was happy to get it in with on the turn. And a quick fold from Freak, LFG, PG, taking down a 75k pot. Big day in the Galfond household. I don't know what Spoker was saying. Final session hype. Yeah, today is the only day where we don't mind a bunch of caps, lock, uh, caps locks in the chat. So it's allowed. We turned on emote only the other day too. That was sweet. <laughs> despite being on Twitch for, I think, nine years or so, Richard was like, what are these things called? Emo emoji thing? I'm like, what? <laughs> so we just let the chat spam for a good 10 minutes. Just saw something about, about a stream that me and Richard did. Z oh, Zach Poker, the one where Richard talks about speech play on the river. What What is it exactly <laughs> you're referencing? Isn't that how they used to uh, title some of the episodes? What What show is that? Mm, was that how i met your mother where they would title the episodes by like the one that something or other oh uh, maybe, maybe. I, don't I don't know i don't really pay too much attention to that. i just click play mm -hmm. <laughs> and then like four o'clock in the morning my screen goes black and netflix asks me if i'm still watching i'm like yes i'm not sad <laughs> oh, picking one off phil with the dream blockers the old nine nine getting picked off by the second nuts all right, so then Henry's going to win GPI commentator of the year for the old man chair comment. No, Ari, come on. We know that that is rigged, hence Jamie winning Twitter personality of the year award. All right? Don't stand a chance. I was like, very glad to not win the commentator one because that would be awful. Like, everyone knows Nick Shulman's the best commentator. And then getting nominated, I was like, if I win that one, then all I'll ever hear about for the rest of my life is like, oh my God, how did that girl win that? Like, she's so much worse than Nick. Uh, it's like very. I don't know. It was a relief when they said Shulman and I didn't have to deal with. It's better to be like underrated forever, right? Than to have everyone call you overrated every time they talk about you. Yeah. But so having said that, there were some great comments. It might have even been from uh, from the likes of you and other people saying that, yes, yeah. we're all aware that Nick is the GOAT. No one's denying that. Yeah, just but send the trophy to him. We don't need that category anymore. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's not where I was going with it. A couple of people are saying, you know, does that mean, you know, Brad Owen should win Vlogger of the Year each year? Does that mean uh, that Nick should win you. Commentator of the Year year in, year out? And I think they're trying to make the GPI, um, yeah. you know, give more recognition and credit to newer people that are putting in effort. Because if you're shooting down these new vloggers and what have you that are putting in a ton of work, 
um, but they kind of feel like they don't stand a chance against the likes of Brad O and that might deter them from putting out content. I feel that, yeah. I kind of think I voted like that too, where I just knew that once someone has won, it just doesn't mean as much the next year to them. Um, I don't know. Some people feel differently about that. They want to dominate and win like 10 years in a row. I'm like, I don't really care. Phil losing a big one over on Yay Phil. Freak with Ironic. a rivet boat. I know. <laughs> well, come up to two hours played, so somewhere around 300 hands played already today. So about 580, 600 hands left. So a decent amount of time to go. And obviously the longer that Phil stays in the green today, the tougher it is going to be for Freak to turn this around. What would you say, Jamie, percentage-wise, the chances of Freak clutching this at the end are? A couple mm. of percent? Yeah, maybe. It's hard to, to ever declare someone dead, though, because we saw what happened with Phil and Venny, so I don't really want to... Uh, let's give him 10%. 10, 10%. Wow, you're giving him 10%? Yeah, we're going to, Ext- you know? Extremely generous. Though. That's extremely generous. <laughs> Three bet pot over on Run It Once Nick. The pot size bet as we head to the four of clubs turn. Three continuing for one third. Setting up a very natural stack to pot ratio going to the river. What person? Fill out when he uh, when he beat Benny was did they run numbers on the odds going forward? Is that a possibility? Can you even do that and figure it out? It had to be really low though, like one percent or something. What when he was down nine hundred k? No, on the last day even there was a there was one hand that was the turning point where he absolutely needed to win that hand at showdown to even have a chance, and then yeah. after that, so like let's say the hand before that hand, what were his odds? Oh wow, um, they were probably even... super low. But I don't really know if you can even figure that out. I feel I always feel like there's an answer for everything because there's so many solvers and just programs we could run, but maybe not. Yeah, Crazy Pyro making a good point saying you can't run odds unless you know the true win rate. And then even when, right. with the true win rate, you'd have to you know, look at standard deviation and just run like uh, thousands of different scenarios. So yeah, so it's close to impossible mm-hmm. to say exactly like, the exact percentage <laughs> S. Mitchell low stakes trying to get me for some money. I don't think so, buddy. I was trying to get 10% to make this more exciting today. <laughs> Nick Marchington, if you don't understand how brutal tournaments are, tell me one MTT pro over 27 who isn't bald or balding. <laughs> Fair point. Touche. Touche, Nick. Triple Barrel saying, best thing the poker world has seen in a decade. That's nice, man. We'll let Phil know. That's how you feel. Limp Fold asks, who's next after action? I have heard whispers it might be Chance Cornus, but you never know. Because I know the Perkins challenge is kind of flexible for when he has time, um, when he can get out on his yacht and play. And I know that they're trying to get back home for a little while at least, so we'll see. I'm dying to see the Chance one. I'm good friends with Chance, um, and I feel like it'll be very fun to watch because he's a bit crazy. From what I know of him um, from playing in No Limit, he's he's a crazy man. Chat, are you guys keeping? Like taking note of how many times Jamie's flexed on stream so far today. So firstly, we know she has Elliot Rose contact details. <laughs> now she's good friends with Chance Corner. That's two. Let's try, let's try and get 10 in the oh, next four no. hours. I didn't even realize. Am I becoming the hell muse with the, the name <laughs> dropping? It's terrible. It's just terrible news. I'm only teasing. <laughs> oh, yeah, she has a pool. Great point, Rob Dab. That's three. Pool, cool, yep. <laughs> What else? Every time I talk about crouton, it's a flex. People know that. Yeah, massive flex. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. A couple of people saying, I'll play Henry with Phil's money. JB George said, I'll play Phil with Hen- Henry's money. 
Wow, so Freak, after check raising flop on the Jack-7-5, goes for the check raise on the Nine of Clubs turn. ay yeah. So Freak, check raise with the inside wrap on the Jack-7-5. Nine on the turn, giving Phil the nine high straight with a flush redraw, giving Freak the nuts. So it looks like Phil is in the red for the first time so far today, down around 25, 30k. There are some so many weird, interesting people in poker. I would love to hear their backstories. Like, Jungle Man's kind of in between the old school and new school, and also I understand he's not everyone's favorite right now, but he is one of the most interesting, weirdest people. They could have definitely built a backstory around him. Um, and same thing with Ike. Like, Ike isn't flashy, Haxton, but he's super interesting and funny. And, like, once he was gone from stars and was able to have a Twitter account that's not so closely uh, monitored by everyone, he was hilarious. Wow. Um, Sorry. Same with Scott oh, Phil wow. Galfond getting extremely fortunate on table run it once, Nick. Getting OOL. With the 10 10 <laughs> 3 3 on the 7 6 deuce running into top set and manages to ping a 10 on the river on the second run out. <laughs> Come on, guys, bringing this back up the right. So just Googled you, your voice absolutely doesn't match your face. What does that mean? Can someone please explain to us what that means so that we can either agree or disagree with you? <laughs> okay. So I, the way that I see it, it means one of two things. I'm either extremely fucking ugly <laughs> or extremely good looking. I don't know. I'm assuming it's the uglier side of things. And you guys just like my voice and expected me to be better looking. I don't know. Pamela, <laughs> <laughs> it's not horrible. Just think his face should have a different voice. <laughs> Your face matches Jamie's voice. <laughs> Oh man, the double, that's great. That's kind of insulting to both of us, maybe? I don't know. Marley's saying he means subtitles are required. <laughs> Come on, guys. Let's, try, let's, let's, let's focus on a couple of hands, all right? <laughs> then we can get back to getting out of line in the chat. Still got 400 hands to go. Potential for a 90k pot over on table. Yay, Phil. I do not sound like Hugh Grant. That's like saying every American sounds like, I don't know, Phil Galfond. Morgan Freeman. Yeah. Okay, S. Mitchell wants you to do an Austin Powers impression. Not I thought he'd been doing it the whole time. Wow. Freak drilling this river. Over on table, yay, Phil. 29k in the middle. A three bet pot with a pot size bet. Thrown in on table, run it once, Nick. Freak the pre flop three better. Setting up an SPR of less than one going to the river. What well, a surprise to see Freak lead over on Yay Phil. There it is. Piles. Folding. And Crouton added his commentary to that. He just whined really loud. So apparently he is rooting for Team <laughs> Phil. So Phil down around 10k on the day, facing a pot size river bet from Freak. Over on table, run it once, Nick as well. <laughs> Right, 85 says you sound like a professor for entomology and you look like you study teen magazine. 
that I study what? Teen magazine. <laughs> wow. Oh my god. This is great. Is this going to bother you for the rest of your life? No. I'll tell oh, you what's going to bother me though. Is Phil Too getting sucked out on. Us. Mm. Yeah, set over set, freak, rivering, set of kings, and a 78k pot going his way, which means Phil is now down around about 40k on the day with 400 hands left. We may start seeing some form of like leveling coming into play. In the sense that Phil knows that Freak knows that Phil knows, etc. That in these river spots, I can maybe over bluff because Phil should be overfolding to ensure that he wins the challenge, and vice versa. Mm -hmm. So it wouldn't surprise me to see a couple of lighter calls in Phil's shoes in these river spots because he knows that Freak might, you know, just be trying to exploit the fact that that Phil might be playing a bit tighter. Mm -hmm. It's been, it's been a fun five months, but we're, we're only taking a break. You know, it's not like the challenge is over. Once we get the Brandon Adams match out of the way with, which is you know supposedly going to be the final match of this challenge, then it's going to be like, well, now what? Now yeah. what do I do? That's going to be sad. Start the, the Kilbane challenge. I, think, I feel like it's time. Another couple of big pots. Freak with the check raise. On the turn over on Ye Phil, three bet pot that checked through to the turn. Certainly a board that you shouldn't be doing too much check raising on. Phil does cool. Dicey river card. Crouton getting out of line in the background, not liking this river. You can hear that. I was wondering. <laughs> He's been crying and barking because he just knows that Phil's Phil's stuck today. Wow, Freak just leads for the lot. Hmm. Right, what do we do with like seven six here? After getting check raised on the turn. Big pot on the right as well, and run it once, Nick. Freak living up to his name, he is indeed. Although it's Phil in the driver's seat on Runner Wants Nick, at least we take one of them down. Oh, Phil has a boat on Yay Phil. After calling the check raise on the turn, I'm trying to think what boats we call and what boats we fold. Fold 7 6, call 9 7. Uh, do you think Vinavidi or Action Freak are very salty just after the challenge and they lose? I don't think so. And actually, we heard uh, Farah say that Venny and Phil have become friends and that they text each other and stuff. Yeah, that's it. I mean, that's just goals. <laughs> that's just goals right there. Play the highest stakes possible against each other and then become friends afterwards. I mean, like Master of the Venny and Phil Bromance. Phil with the check. Right, not, sorry, not check, raise. Raise versus a pot size continuation bet from Freak. Money is going to go in. Oh, we drill the first one. I uh, almost drilled the second one. Phil turning a straight on both boards. Couldn't fade the spade spade run out on the second one. Pappy Van Winkle saying Stapes' favorite pastime is drinking a few shots of bourbon and sounding the four bet horn in his neighborhood. Talking of four bets, we're on Yay Phil. Okay. Oh, that's what we'd like to see. Well, let's not jinx it, chat, but 
We like a five bet. Potential for an 80k pot. Actually, no, sorry, that's not true. 70k pot. Feel the effective stack. The start of this hand. Freak has had some full bet folds so far throughout this challenge. Do you think Freak ever just runs it here? Just runs it to try and scoop and really put pressure on Phil going into these final like 380, 400 hands? Yeah, I, I think I would be trying to increase the variance as much as possible if I'm action Freak. Give yourself a chance, but I, who knows? Maybe Phil locks it up as soon as it gets like that. I don't know. What happened, guys? So when Gazzy B and Henry do commentary again, please announce it ahead of time so I can get an interpreter. <laughs> Will do, man. Will do. That would be amazing subtitles. I'll type out your subtitles for you, even though I won't understand half of it. <laughs> yeah, Nick. Uh, Nick sent us a screenshot whilst we were commentating. The sub guy uh, replied to uh, one of Run at Once's tweets saying, "I have no idea what these two are talking about, but it's a <laughs> lot of fun." That was a good crack. That was a good crack. A freak in the driver's seat on both tables. Or and a half, we could make Henry cry. 35 minutes? Yeah, if none of us filtered anything, do you think we could make you cry? No. I, I think so. Not a chance. <laughs> Very emotionless when it comes to that sort of thing. So Freak, interestingly, not setting up a river jam. I mean, he can get almost all of his money in on this run out. SPR just over one. Lord Bar saying Gazzy loves a good mixed game punt ski. Oh, yeah, have to flick it in the mixed game streets from time to time. Freak, continuing to tell the story he was telling on the turn. Bet's pot. Do you believe this, Jamie? Or do you just see 23k and you're like, yeah, I fold? Wow, oh, Phil Galford. Wow. Picking it off. And no, I don't believe it. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, well played. Wait, wait, wait for the cards to be shown at Showdown yep. and then announce you don't believe it. <laughs> Milan Silk said, will this be done today? I hope so. Playing tennis tomorrow. <laughs> Meant to be playing tennis around this time. I know Farah's rooting for it to be over and done with today so they can go back to vegas with action freaks money yeah she's in the car already honking the horn like let's go Says he spent a hundred nights a year in Vegas, never stepped foot in a nightclub. Yeah, that's uh, that's kind of my my plan. I like grudgingly will go, and some of the day clubs are kind of fun, um, like pool party type things. They're fun, but nightclubs are just so lame. I I even when I was young, I didn't really like them. What nightclubs? Yeah, I just think they're not fun. They're usually yeah. too loud. Like I just want to like I think pubs are better. Just grab beers with your friends. I end up talking to more people when I go to like not the nightclub type places anyway, because it's just like I don't know. They're built to be too loud and and very, I don't know, not very personal. They kind of suck. Yeah, I couldn't agree more. I hate not being able to like, even 
hear myself think, mm -hmm. be, able to, be able to talk with people. Nice Plus, you're to... like slow rolling the girl because she can't even hear your voice, and it's not till you leave the club that she finds out that your voice <laughs> and face don't match. <laughs> <laughs> oh man, you keyed that one up perfectly. Well played. <laughs> well played. I could feel it coming the second you said slow roll. It's like, oh, here we go. Here it is. <laughs> Two. Fucking Shay, Jamie. Well played. <laughs> Got him. That was brilliant. The two words it. Unreal timing. That was that was very GTO. <laughs> oh man. You wait. Chat loves it. Chat loves when we just pick on you. It's great. It is good fun. It is good fun. <laughs> wow man, I mean that is just sick. Whilst Jamie's roasting me, freak roasting Phil, second nut boat against nut boat. Things looking like could be a lot closer than we expected. Coming into today, Phil now down around 120k. Mm. Came into today up 240, about 300 hands left to go. So we're still, you know in the safe zone by about 50k but a couple more pots like that go freaks way a couple more setups brutal spot for phil 10 8 versus 10s on the good old-fashioned 10 8 8 x x i just can't stop laughing at some of the shit that's being typed into twitch chat 175 hands equals 87 and a half people. Thank you for your comment. Phil limped button. Freak potted. Phil called. Pot size. Continuation bet from Freak on the ace queen jack. Rainbow continuing for pot on the turn as well. Really interesting when you take into consideration that Phil is now limping his entire range so completely uncapped even going you know to boards like this backdoor diamonds getting there as well as the board pairing And Freak continuing for pot. Phil snapping him off with the ace jack. Freak getting out of line. Yay, Phil. That is a big pot. Yay. It wouldn't have surprised me if, uh, if Phil had lost that, if we had seen the snap sit out to look at the numbers. That is a huge pot. Oh, man, PT saying, great commentary as always. How does it feel to be part of poker history without playing? It's pretty amazing, man. Firstly, to see Phil with that epic comeback against Fenny. I think that's going to be something that will be spoken about for years to come. Um, and then coming into this match as well, where everyone in the PLO community, uh, even after Phil came back against Fenny, was saying that Action Freak is his toughest opponent. Um, yeah, to see him, you know, 150 hands away from from clutching another W. It's huge. From, um, from what Richard and you have said, that Action Freak may be his toughest opponent for real, that he has played really well mm. and been very swingy, but you know, it seems like he gave Phil a run for his money. Maybe in quarantine, Perkins is studying every single day, though, and he's just going to come crush Bill. <laughs> that would just be wow. <laughs> He's currently uh currently down ninety five K against Galfond, the four hundred K stop loss. Big pot developing on table run at once. Nick. Phil playing his check. Started off the hand around hundred and fifty bigs effective. Although I think the biggest pots we're gonna be seeing going forward are around this size.
Oh. Oh. Okay, we'll take the donation, boys and girls. Give us that $24,000 donation. Phil just calling with the ace high blush because it's the second nuts. You see that, Jamie? Yeah. With the second nuts. Yeah. We still lose to the straight flush, so we just call. And now, after seeing the last couple of uh, showdowns, Freak just getting really out of line. I was waiting eight, for this moment. Eight, seven, three, deuce, badoogie. One spade blocker, you gotta give him credit. Master, that's a good question. I, I don't know enough about PLO to know what constitutes normal play or not, but let's just say this is a, a no limit match. I think if I was action freak, I would have just tried to up the variance a ton, play bigger pots early and try to get it closer so that Phil couldn't just crush me the whole time. You'd think that action freak has an advantage in the beginning of this match and that Phil's trying to hold on to a lead and he probably wants to play a little bit more cautious. But I think now that the match is pretty much won for Phil, Action Freak is just trying to win some pots and, and minimize his losses. <laughs> What's up, Harry? <laughs> Harry, come on. I didn't make it up, did I? How am I supposed to know how Harry is short for Henry? I know they have the same amount of letters. Just giving you the straight up facts. My dad's American and wanted to call me Hank, and my mum was having none of it. She was like, no, that's just not happening. Yeah. Hank. Uh, Harry and, Jer uh, and Jerry in the booth. Freak betting half pot. Over on table, yay, Phil. Phil sitting out on table, run it once, Nick. I don't know if that means it's GG's or whether they're just going to take a short break to get the final hand count. It could be all over, Jamie. Phil with a check That's raise. Cool. Taking it down on table, yay, Phil. Sitting out on both tables. We're about 140k in the green with less than 80 hands to go. But we're taking a five minute break instead oh. for this. Ay, uh. Tease. Brandon, what's right, I'm, taking a, I'm taking a two minute break. All right, do it. Tell, tell everyone about your Tinder experiences. They've been asking. It's not happening. Chat, the GG's in the chat. We appreciate them, but it is not over. Five minute break. 80-ish hands left. But we can still get a lot of love in the chat for Phil and Action Freak. Mr. Kurt said, what was the most amount of people that he had on his slide at one time in the old New York City apartment? <laughs> nice. That That is a great question. And also, what I need to know if he wanted to get rid of the slide. Or if Farrah was over the slide, she's like, listen, grow up. We're like, no, we're, we're, we gotta get rid of the slide. Or, you know, did you just get tired of it? He's like, man, perhaps this was a bad choice. I need to know. Yeah, Farrah was just like, listen, all right? You're 29 now. You need to grow up. We're getting <laughs> married. Uh, my parents aren't impressed that I'm engaged to someone that's got a slide in their house. All right, sort it out. And she just had a bit of a stern word with him, and uh, you know, they re yeah, had to remove the slide. Slide was pre Farah. Okay, so the slide is already gone. We can't blame Farah. Interesting. About 15 hands to go, boys and girls. Farah must be buzzing to give Phil a big old hug and he steps out of the office. I just wish everyone, like, I wish we could all stand there and just give him a round of applause <laughs> So as he walks out. Well done, champ. 
that's something else I'm going to miss. The atmosphere, the FTs when you're on the yeah. rail at the Rio yeah. this summer. The most fun. Scott Alpha said, also shout out to Nick for the massive effort with everything. Yeah, it's due. Poor old Nick having to listen to us commentate for hours on then, day in, day out. And there you have it, boys and girls. Jamie, they are sitting out. And, that's and that is all she wrote. Let's get some GGs in the chat for Phil oh. Galvon and Action Freak. Phil Galfond winning another Galfond Challenge match. Just going to wait for him to get on call. Jamie, I'm looking forward to this interview. Phil, Phil is calling. He has to answer first, Jamie. <laughs> Hello, is, is this Mr. Falcons? This is Mr. Falcons. <laughs> How's it going? Oh, not bad. How are you doing? Super congrats. Chat is very hype. We had 3,000 people. I think uh, about 2,990 of them were rooting for you. <laughs> nice. <laughs> Thank you, guys. <laughs> um, so we just have, we know that you're tired, so we just have a few questions. Uh, one question was, at any point in this match, were you scared? Did you think that you might lose this one to a worthy opponent? Um, I mean, at any point, not today. Um, but at any point in the match, certainly, uh, you know, it, days ago, uh, I thought it was possible. But I mean, I, I had such a big lead going into yesterday, um, and yesterday went about as badly as it could have. And it's still, you know, I still went into today with enough of a lead that there was really no, no real chance of of losing uh, the challenge because you know I can start off playing relatively normal, which is what I did, and then if I lose a few buy-ins, um, just keep pot small which is unfortunately what I had to do, but, uh, but yeah. Is that why you started to limp some buttons? Yeah, it's just uh, when, when there's so much pressure on me to not gamble in a big pot, then if I'm letting him create big pots preflop, uh, he's going to be able to kind of bully me around in them. So if I keep them small preflop, then um, I can afford to make call downs and things like that without really putting the challenge at risk. Gotcha. I'm forgetting that after today's loss of 123k, you ended up up 114k for the whole match. So that's pretty cool. Um, yeah. I, chat wanted. Oh, sorry. Go. For no, no. I was gonna say I, I had uh, had dreams of of a much bigger uh, win uh, a few days ago. But uh, all in all, you know, if you told me at the beginning of the challenge that that this would be the the results, I'd be happy with it. Mm-hmm. Chat wanted you to compare your opponents so far, and they want to know if you think uh, if Venny and Action Freak played a significant number of hands together, who do you think would win? Hmm. I guess I don't know. And I, well, I think I have an opinion, but I don't want to say. They're both excellent okay. players. So even even say, I mean saying that one is better than the other is not really a slight to the other, but uh but I'd prefer not to. Okay. Um I'll keep it short, but I just wanted to know what's the first thing you're gonna do in Vegas? Are you gonna have chill out time or are you gonna get back to studying and reviewing hands you played and stuff um for your next challenges? Honestly, I, I haven't decided yet, and that's what I <laughs> what I need to figure out now. I was just waiting for for this to end. Um, so now that's kind of the the goal uh, for the next few days is to uh, figure out what's next. The Mighty W says Blackjack. <laughs> <laughs> Blackjack, yeah. <laughs> They're opening some casinos soon, right? So. Yep. Oh gonna, boy. Gonna yeah. Yeah. Um, and yeah, I guess I guess that's it for me. What do you got, Henry? Henry said he's not going to say a word, but. I, <laughs> no. I <laughs> Uh, Phil, obviously, first and foremost, uh, congratulations on closing out another match uh, with a win. Um, the first thing that I would like to know is how you would rate your game on, you know, that college style grading system that you have for your overall game today, yesterday, the last week or so. Uh, how do you feel? Um, I, I had actually like I had some good days and some bad days. I think um, I think 
two sessions ago, not this one, not yesterday, but the one before was probably my best. And I might have even given myself an A if... Uh, wow. Uh, and then yesterday was was not great, maybe like a C plus. And I think today was, um, I think I started out playing very well. And it's really, it's kind of hard. Like I started out, you know, B plus, A minus. And then the end though, it's kind of hard to rate my game when I am just like, I don't know, playing a very different style. I think I handled the different style okay for having not really prepared or practiced it. Mm. Um, but it, it, it felt... I mean, it's not fun to to feel kind of handcuffed, and uh, I couldn't couldn't uh, make all the plays that I would normally want to. But yeah, I, I think I think today I, I am a solid B B minus. Uh, that's the straight off. And you, you mentioned there just briefly that you didn't have that much time to prepare for such a huge adjustment in your overall play style with Freak having a, mm -hmm. a very different style to Venny. Is is that what you mean by that? Oh, no, I mean, uh, I didn't really prepare for the situation where, you know, he wins a few buy-ins to start today. Ah, and, okay. then, uh, and then I start limping buttons and keeping pots smaller and things like that. Uh, it was kind of just, I mean, that's, that's the first time in all of the challenges thus far that I've limped the button. So I, I haven't uh, practiced that strategy at all, but it's, you know, it's still poker. It's still it worked out. It worked yeah. out. Well, obviously, we don't want to keep you much longer from the family. We're, we're well aware that Farah's got the bags packed, the driver on standby, <laughs> that the plane is fueled and ready to go at the airport to get you back to Vegas. But before you go, um, could we just get a word from you in terms of when we can ex expect to see you back at the tables? Uh, like at least a, a rough idea of when we're going to be going live again. I, I don't actually know the answer because a lot of it is um, is up in the air uh, due to travel restrictions. Mm. Um, so I don't know when, you know, when borders uh, will open such that I can get outside the U.S. again and, and play some more challenges. Um, I've discussed with Chance the possibility of, of playing on um, WSOP.com so we could play while we are in the U.S., but I don't think he's quite ready to play yet. So... I don't know the answer. There's there's a lot up in the air, and that's kind of why it's so difficult to plan right now. Yeah, for sure. I mean, I guess when you started planning this towards the end of last year, none of us could have expected to, to be in the situation that we are now. But uh, Phil, congratulations. It's It's been an absolute pleasure to call out the action um, for the last 20 sessions. And the last five and a half months, you're going home with an extra 264K in your back pocket. Uh, spend it wisely, obviously. And, uh, <laughs> Thank you. Yeah, J Jamie as well. It's been it's been a lot of fun. And yeah, any any final thoughts, Jamie? Phil? And say to Phil, good luck at the blackjack tables at that uh, few hundred k. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Spent time. Yeah. Need to brush up on my blackjack strat, but <laughs> I'll do my best. Thank you. Thank you guys for uh, being here and and uh, being a part of this. No, oh, thanks. thanks. Thanks for putting on a good show again. And for the last time of the match between Mr. Phil Galfond and Action Freak. We're clocking out. Jamie, Phil, chat. It's been a pleasure. GG's, Phil, honestly. GG.